Okay, all right now. So I'm logging into the Blue Prism 2. So this is how the Blue Prism 2 looks. Okay. Okay. There are five tabs in this tool, which I will explain one by one later in this tutorial. First, we, we shall look at the studio tab. Okay. In the studio tab, we have two tabs called the process and objects. Both this process and objects are used to automate the application. I will tell the difference after I take the classes of objects in the upcoming video. Okay. So let's create a process. Testing. Okay. okay, let's open the process by double clicking it. So this is the process window. And it's the main page. We can create another page, it's called sub page, and you can rename as you like. Okay. So we have 20 stages in this process window. And this is start and this is end and this is information bar. The start and information you cannot ever delete it. It's a built in so you can never ever delete it. See, I can delete the end, but I can't delete the start. Okay. So what are these stages? What is the use of these stages? Okay. And what is the use of this process studio? Process studio is nothing but it is used to automate the process like you want to do some arithmetic calculation in the Excel or you want to read the data from the Excel and process it and update into the same Excel. Likewise, it has numerous applications which can be automated. Alright, so let's look at the stages. This is pointer which is used to point the things and uh, by double clicking it you can see inside of inside the stages and its properties. This is link which is used to link the stages. You should always start with the center of the one stage and to the center of the another stage or else it will give you some error. Alright. This is block. It is just a nothing but information window or a comment, something like that. Okay. Process. What is process? In programming languages, we used to call a function within another function. Likewise, this process window, this process stage is used to call a process which we already created earlier. So, I have already created all this process. Here, I will show you. These are the process which I already created, for example, Gmail Auto. All right. If you want to call that process, you can just choose the Gmail Auto and click OK. If you run this process, it will straight away go to the... Sorry. So this is the button which is used to run the process. If I run this process, it will go to this and look for the Gmail process and it will automatically run the Gmail process. In this run, run button, we are seeing three stages. One is slow, one is normal and one is fast which you can use as you like. Okay. So this page, what is the page stage? Just now we have seen. This is the main page and this is the test page like sub page. Okay. If you are drawing that page change in here. Okay. You can call the test page in the main page. See. I am now going to run this program. Let's see if it calls the test page. It goes to the test page. Oh God, it's calling the my Gmail one.
I'm just going to pause it because it's a big process. Right? I've already automated the Gmail one. It's automatically going through the process of it. This is used to reset the process where you can start from the beginning. And this stage is called action stage where you can perform several operations. See, you can call MS Excel VPU or you can call the objects which you created earlier by yourself. Okay, and for example, I am calling the MS Excel VPU. These are the numerous operations where you can use action button, action stage to call all these things. Okay, decision. Decision is just saying nothing but a yes or no. Okay, so I am just placing the decision here and I am just going to let it. So, we will not like this. Like this. Right. You can mention your properties here and your expression here, which I will later explain detail. Okay, this is the decision stage. This is the choice stage. It's like just a switch case in our programming. Decision will have only yes or no or true or false. In choice, you can have multiple criteria, just like a switch case in our programming language. Calculation. Calculation is, is a stage which is used to perform several calculations like arithmetic, logical, or see these are the things which you can perform in this calculation stage. And the calculation stage, it has additional field, it is called store in result. You have to store the result which has been performed in the calculation stage. Okay. This is multi-calculation. In this multi-calculation stage, you can perform multiple calculations at the same time. For example, addition, subtraction, division, logical, everything you can perform in the same stage. Unlike calculation stage, in this calculation stage, you have to create each and every stage for each and every operations. But in this multi-calc, you can do everything in the same stage. Data item. Data item is nothing but just declaring a variable. In our programming languages, we used to declare a variable like integer a equal to 0 or integer a integer b likewise. We can declare here, there are several data types in here, which I will explain. Collection. Unlike data item, collection is an array where you can store multiple values, multiple variables. In data item, you can declare only one variable. Okay. Look. Loop is used to perform the process repeatedly, okay? Just like a for loop in our programming. Uh, note is not just nothing but a command. Anchor, what is anchor? Okay. If I am linking this from here, it's not looking. Yeah, it's look little messy, right? It goes sideways. So if I want to make it look neater or look clean, I'm just going to use the anchor. Likewise, we can use the anchor. The end is just nothing but just the end of the process. Alert is used to give you the alert message exception. This used to perform some, handle some errors and recover and resume, all these are used to handle the errors. In the upcoming video, I will explain each stages by making some calculations, giving it some process. Thank you.